Hello and welcome to your monthly numerology here at Readings at the Roundtable. I'm Jennifer and this is your monthly numerology for November 2024. I love this. I do. I love that the numerology for November and December is always the same monthly numerology as it is in January and February of the next year. The reason why I love that is because we're sort of carrying over a little bit of the energy from the previous year, moving into a new year with a new number because 2025 is a nine year. Currently 2024 is an eight year. 44, eight year is what I say. There's some people with numerology that don't feel that way. That's fine to each his own. Um, but this is a 44, eight year and moving into 2025 is a nine year. So it is going to be the same, but a little bit different feeling of the vibration with the numbers that you have for November as in January. So, but it, it's, it's carrying the same energy over so that you can kind of clear the energy, move into something new while still bringing a little bit of the old with you. You know, making yourself comfortable, I guess I should say. So for November, we've got a, a few things happening, some interesting things happening astrologically. On November 1st, we start the month off with a new moon in Scorpio. New moon in Scorpio hits its peak at 8.47 a.m. on November 1st. So not only is it happening on the first day of the month, but it's also happening first thing in the morning. So I really do love this. And by the way, that is 8.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when it hits its peak. On November 2nd, we have Mercury moving into Sagittarius. Now, this is not the worst place for Mercury, but it is certainly not its favorite place because Mercury rules Gemini, which opposes Sagittarius. And so it's, it's feeling a little, bit, mm, a little bit uneasy because it's opposing something that it rules. However, here, here's the kicker. Jupiter is currently in Gemini. Guess who it rules? Sagittarius. So, and, and that's the more modern version of astrology. If you're looking at the like traditional, it's a different ruler, but this is what we're going with. So Jupiter rules Sagittarius, Mercury rules uh, Gemini, and they're opposing each other. So this is going to be real entertaining for a minute. That's what I'm going to go with, entertaining. <laughs> On the 3rd of November, we have Mars moving into Leo. Mars does enjoy being in fire signs. I mean, it rules Aries. So Mars does enjoy being in Leo. This is a good time. Um, on the 11th, Venus moves into Capricorn. Again, not a horrible place for Venus. Its worst place is in Virgo. And who can blame it? I mean, I have a Virgo sun. I can't blame Venus for that. But definitely, it's... It's not a horrible place for Venus. Um, so again, we're just still dealing with like a lot of the planets are moving into places that are not the worst, but maybe not their most favorite. Um, on the 15th, we have a full moon in Taurus. The full moon hits its peak at 428 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also on the same day, Saturn goes direct in um, Pisces. So, um, that Saturn is currently in, again, not the worst place for Saturn, but certainly not its most favorite, but it's giving us a little bit of a boost on our discipline. Now that Saturn is moving direct, it's giving us just a little bit of a boost in our discipline because going retrograde in a water sign, it's, it's already feeling a little weird in that water sign. And now it's going retrograde. It's just like, okay. This is good. But going direct, it is going to give us that boost in our discipline that I do feel like we need. On the 19th, Pluto moves back into Aquarius. Now, I hope, I haven't looked ahead into 2025 that deeply, but I do not believe that Pluto goes retrograde into Capricorn again. I think Pluto is here stationing in Aquarius for the next 20 years. Pluto does not 
fully leave Aquarius until 2044. So we're in this for the long haul. Yeah, I kind of dig that. Now, on the 21st, we have the sun moving into Sagittarius. All right, Sag season. I mean, I love all those Sagges out there just like, oh, celebrate good times. I know, you're in it. Um, on the 25th, we have a little, just a little bit of a curveball, but not a huge one because we deal with this a few times in a year. Mercury goes retrograde. It's okay. We're going to be okay. We are. Just make sure you read the fine print. Make sure you double check everything. Just, it's going to be all right. It's a few weeks out of the year. Like, what is this, the third time or the fourth time we've had Mercury retrograde this year? I know. It's not horrible, and I'm double ruled by Mercury. We can get through this. And it's after the election, so we should be clear. Hopefully. Well, the election here in the U.S., <laughs> just FYI. And it's really gearing us up for this holiday season. Mercury retrograde, mix up in communication. Please double check with your guests. Please double check with everything that's going on and please double check like prices and your money situation as we move into the holiday season. More on that in just a second. Now, at the end of the month, we're ending with uh, three planets and north node in fire. Uh, we have three planets and south node in air. Two planets in Earth and two planets in water. So it's pretty balanced. I mean, we're in a pretty balanced situation, I feel like. Um, more so than we have been, like, some parts of this year. But I'm really, I'm really digging this. This is good. I feel like this is going to be a fantastic month. Now, I want to tell you about the stone that I have picked for this month. Or maybe it picked me. I don't know. But um, I want to talk to you about this lovely, lovely crystal stone, however you want to put it, and um, see what you think. Okay, so the one that I picked is sodalite. Sodalite is such a fantastic stone. I mean, look at this. Look at how gorgeous this is. And look at how many different sorts of, like, I, I want to say like variations we have, okay? We have some darker ones. We have some lighter ones with more of the, like the white veining in it. I have some rough and some polished here, some smooth. This is like one of the prettiest, prettiest like examples. I love this. Look at the browns and the blacks and the whites and the blues. And it predominantly is a blue stone. But wow, 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 wow. The thing about this bracelet I really want to show you is do you see like all the variations that are in this bracelet? That is fantastic examples of like all the variations that you can get in Soda Light. I know. And this, I can't help it. I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? I know you can see the reflections of my lights, but isn't that just a gorgeous piece? And of course we have like the ones that are, don't roll off, don't roll off, stay right there. Um, we have the lighter ones that does have, you can still see the little bit of brown in it, but the lighter ones are still, I mean, so pretty. I even brought out a wand, you know, um, a wand, a heart, some polished, some of the more like rough stones. I have a lot of these. I, I do really, I really, really like Soda Light. So let me tell you why I like Soda Light so much. So one of the things that I really, when I was looking up, and I got several different books here. One book that I pulled from was Crystal Therapy um, by one woman that we don't speak of a lot. And the other one is Judith Lukomsky. I think I'm saying that right, but Crystal Therapy. It is a fantastic book if you can get your hands on it. The definition that I really love is helps you release control issues, increases psychic awareness, and is wonderful. It is a wonderful third eye stone. I Seriously, that is fantastic. And I think that releasing control issues during this time of 
Mercury uh, going retrograde is going to be really important. Um, it also um, helps clear electromagnetic stress. So being around like your computers or being on your phone all the time or having to use your GPS, this is a good time to like use some of this stuff. Um, use Soda Light to help clear out some of this stuff. Um, this is great for building self-esteem, self-acceptance, self-trust. Um, it relieves panic attacks, phobias, guilt, um, mental confusion. I think that is amazing. I really do. Um, this stone helps to stimulate the pineal and pituitary glands, and it harmonizes with the third eye and deepens meditation to understand the circumstances in which you find yourself. Again, we're entering into the holiday season, especially here in the U.S., because we have Thanksgiving before we run into Christmas. Um, this, uh, it helps to uh, eliminate confusion and intellectual bondage. It releases mental conditioning and rigid beliefs, creating space to put new insights into practice, bringing about emotional balance. I love that. It transforms a defensive or overly sensitive personality and releasing core, core fears and control mechanisms and integrating the shadow qualities. It's useful for groups. It brings harmony and solidarity of purpose, stimulating trust and companionship and encouraging interdependence. Soda light clears, again, electromagnetic pollution and can be placed on computers. I think this is such, this is such a wonderful thing. I, I do. I love this. I love, love, love this stone. I think it's wonderful. And this is the other book that I use, The Encyclopedia of Crystals by Judy Hall. Highly, highly recommend this book. I have a couple of copies of this. Can't get away from it. I know. I just, I love it. I, I do recommend it to everyone. Um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is I am going to be pulling from two decks of cards today. I'm going to be pulling from Moonology, the Oracle cards, and the Goddess Guidance Oracle card deck um, so that we can get some advice for your monthly, your individual monthly numerology. Yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to November. I'm really looking forward to revisiting this monthly numerology when we move into a nine year and seeing what the, what the difference is, what the vibration is going to be like. Because with this month in particular, we have a lot of planets that are starting to move into a, like into new signs. They're going direct. They're starting to go direct. Mercury's going retrograde. It's, it's a lot of energy, but I'm looking forward to seeing what the numerology looks like for you in January under the different vibration of a nine year. I know. So excited. All right. Stick around. Let's see what your individual numerology is for your life path. And uh, so we can get through the, the last of this eight year. Hello, Life Path 6. All right, November is a seven month for you. And that means it's a lot of spiritual energy. It really is. This is about, the, the vibration of a seven is about finding um, a spiritual connection to each other, to the universe, to nature, to like, I, I almost wanna say like to yourself, to having that spiritual connection to yourself, to your higher self. Um, this is definitely about spiritual study. It's about um, opening yourself up to more metaphysical study. It's about finding peace, recognizing and finding peace. That's not easy to recognize peace because we get into our heads, we get into our businesses, we get into our work, into our families, our spouses, 
whatever. We get into it and we start like really just, that's all we can focus on. That's all we can focus on. We can't focus on the bigger picture. We can't focus on anything else. This is about looking for and finding peace and trusting your own judgment to know what is peace and what isn't. This is definitely a fantastic time of assessment, of really looking at situations and analyzing them and just going, okay, is this, is this what I'm looking for? That involves contemplation and introspection. There's a lot of stuff going on in a seven month. I mean, and if you recall, 2023 was a seven year. There's a lot of time for us to think and express ourselves and open ourselves up to more spiritual study, to more metaphysical study and just say, okay, let's, let's go beyond here. There's something beyond this way of thinking. There's something beyond this thought process. And the thing is like six, you want to be there for your family, your community, your home, your friends. You want to be there for all of those people. You, you want to be a part of those units. You want to be a part of the, the family, the community, your friends, your job. You want to be there in heart, heart and spirit. You're just ready to dive in. This is a, this is a time that you can really, I, I, this is the time you can really open yourself up and see that there may be more than one option. And that's the analysis part. That's the introspection part. The contemplation is sitting back and just going, Hmm, Hmm. Let's take a philosophical view of this. Seven is a lot. It, it, it really is a lot of energy. The mantra of the seven is I am graceful spirit finding insight, beauty, and peace around me. That's pretty amazing because some people can walk through nature and never actually see it. They're, they're more, you know, like feeling the elements, like the hot, the cold, the whatever's going on, but they're never actually like feeling the peace or the beauty or anything that's around them. So this is definitely a time for you to open yourself up to that. It's pretty awesome. The lessons of the seven are making choices without retreating from others and finding the answers within yourself and trusting them. Finding the answers within yourself and trusting them. And it's so hard, especially when you know what's the right way for somebody else to do something, but they're not, they're not open to hearing like your wisdom because you've already messed that up before. All you have to do is just sit back and go, they'll figure this out. I'm going to let them do that. It brings you peace and it gives them the opportunity to figure it out. You're going to be there for them because that's who you are. Life past six, you're a counselor, your friend, you want to help people. You want to teach people, but this may be the time for whatever instance that you're in to let somebody sit back and figure it out themselves. Now, I don't know what you might be dealing with. I don't know what might be going on, but obviously we're going to do this responsibly, right? We're not going to like abandon a toddler at home. I'm just saying. The shadow side of a seven, of the vibration of the seven, is self-imposed isolation, self-doubt, running away from problems or decisions because of insecurity. So there's a lot that could be happening with trusting your own judgment. It could trigger us to feel insecure. It could trigger that self-doubt. That's where we need to step back and go, okay, who else can I trust? If I can't trust myself, oh, that's deep, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Listen to your insight, listen to your inner guidance and listen to what spirit is trying to tell you. I'm so sorry about this. I can't believe I'm getting this many texts, but we are getting closer and closer to the election here in the States. So, you know, they, they just won't stop messaging you. All right. I, I do think that, I think this could be, 
a very challenging month for some people, but I think that you can handle it. I really do. Because this is a, you're not, you're not a shrinking violet. And being in a seven month or even in a seven year or a seven day is not for the faint of heart. It really isn't. A lot of people have a hard time with it. Because not everybody wants to be open to, um, not everybody wants to be open to spirit. Goodness, goodness. Ooh, Ostera, ah, come on, Canon. There we go. Ostera, fertility. It is the perfect time for you to start new projects access new ideas and give birth to new conditions <gasps> this is awesome this is awesome it is the perfect time for you to start new projects access new ideas and give birth to new conditions open yourself up really expand yourself spiritually metaphysically open yourself up to like new new and interesting ideas from spirit mm -mm -mm. I love it I love it Flipping out cards. That's crazy. Okay, this is getting silly. <laughs> oh! South Node. Don't let your past hold you back. I like that. Don't let your past hold you back. Okay, let's read about that. I don't know if you can hear my phone like chime, chime, chime. It is not chimed that much all day. And now it's just like, oh, I need to contact her right now. Okay, this is silly. Where is it? I'm serious. Okay, I cannot find it. Ah, I found it. I found it. I found it. Yay. Okay, South Node. Um, don't let your past hold you back. The South Node, like the North Node, is a karmic point, but it's opposite to the North Node and um, relates to the past, perhaps even to past lives. Whatever you're going through and whatever you're asking about, there's a chance that age-old programming and conditioning is stopping you from achieving all that you might. Do you feel stuck in something? This card will often come up as a sign that the situation or relationship you're asking about has somehow become suffocating, even toxic. It suggests that someone, you even, needs to be released, that there's some kind of addiction going on or an unhealthy attachment that needs to be sorted out. One thing is for sure, when you get this card, you're being challenged to make some changes, even if staying where you are feels safer and easier. I release the past. Now, let me tell you, what did I just say about letting people like do their own thing? If that's what's going on with you right now, if that's what's happening with you in this month, this may be an opportunity for you to just be like, okay, all right, I'm gonna let them figure it out. Again, let's do this responsibly, people. I'm not talking about toddlers. I feel like I have to interject that in here for some reason. Mm, yeah, so 
if you're working with someone or if you're friends with someone that you can't get to like listen to your advice, you got to step back. You got to step back and let them figure it out. They'll come back to you because after all, you are a good counselor and teacher. Five past six. This is a time for you though to start some new projects. And I like that. Spiritual expansion. Spiritual expansion. All right, Life Path 6, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful November. Thank you so much for your support on my channel. Thank you so much for being here um, when I was absent for a few months. I do appreciate your continuing support. I look forward to being with you in 2025. I mean, let's get through 2024 first, right? But until we see each other again, get out there and make your magic. Bye. Thank you.